Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here and uh, friends, this is a video for the HIV audience. And today I want to talk about the origin story of uh, HIV. Uh, it's a fascinating history and uh, I think many of you would be curious when and where it happened first and uh, who, was the, who was the first person to probably get infected. All those questions are probably in your mind. Uh, so I thought let's do this video. So let's get started. Welcome back friends. Today we'll delve into the fascinating history of HIV from the origins to its early diagnosis and the evolution of the treatment. HIV or human immune deficiency virus uh, is believed to have uh, its roots in uh, simian immunodeficiency viruses or SIVs. Uh, even now um, researchers use SIV to do the initial research. Uh, SIV is found in African primates, specifically chimpanzees and uh, sooty, magabe, uh, monkeys and uh, are known carriers of these viruses and it's um, hypothesized that hunters in Central and West Africa who came into contact with the blood or body fluids of infected primates perhaps through hunting, butchering or consuming their meat were exposed to SIV. The transmission to humans likely occurred sporadically over a long period of time, possibly as far back as the early 20th century, as per some of the experts in the field. Uh, the emergence of HIV types uh, is another aspect that uh, one would be interested in. Once HIV found its way into the human population, it underwent mutations and adaptations leading to two major types of HIV, that is HIV-1 and HIV-2. HIV-1 is responsive for the, uh, responsible for the global HIV pandemic accounting for almost 95% of the cases worldwide, whereas HIV-2 is less common and primarily found in West Africa. The first document, uh, documented cases of AIDS uh, or acquired immune deficiency syndrome uh, began to surface in the early 1980s. However, it wasn't until 1983 to 1984 that the virus itself was uh, identified. Till then, people were just talking about uh, pe uh, patients suffering from AIDS. Nobody was saying that someone had HIV because nobody knew that there was something called HIV at that time. All they knew was something was happening to people because of which they lost their uh, immunity and they died out of uh, acquired immune deficiency syndrome. But in 1983 to 84, the HIV virus was identified. In 1983, a team of researchers led by Dr. Luc Montagnier uh, at the Pasteur Institute in France isolated a virus and uh, I think initially he called it LAV or, or lymphadenopathy associated virus uh, from a patient with AIDS uh, related symptoms. Concurrently, Dr. Robert Gallio and his team at the National, Center, uh, National Cancer Institute in the United States isolated a similar virus initially named HTLV uh, Roman number three, that is human T cell uh, lymphotrophic virus type three. Uh, it was uh, in 1984 that an agreement was reached uh, to rename uh, the virus as uh, HIV, officially recognizing it as a causative agent of AIDS. This marked a significant turning point in our understanding of HIV. And um, we also understood that if HIV was uncontrolled, it could develop into AIDS. And this paved the way for further research and efforts. And the first objective was to prevent HIV from inducing AIDS. So we are going to look at the evolution of HIV treatment. Moving on to the treatment of HIV, it began in, uh, to emerge in the mid-1980s, shortly after the virus's identification. Initial treatment options were limited and many were experimental. One of the first drugs used to treat HIV was AZT or Zydovirine. Uh, which was uh, approved by the FDA in around uh, 1987. However, AZT alone was not sufficient to control the virus for extended periods. It could just subdue it for a period of time, but not uh, on an extended, uh, uh, extended period scale. So uh, it, it was not as useful as one would have wanted it to be. The evolution of HIV treatment continued over um, several years with key milestones. Um, the early uh, monotherapy or therapy using one drug 
uh, was right from late 1980s uh, and up to uh, early 1990s. So that's when the AZT was common but proved ineffective in the long run. And then we came into what is called as combination therapy, where researchers uh, discovered that using a combination of antiretroviral drugs known as highly active antiretroviral therapy or H-A-A-R-T, which was the short form, was more effective in uh, suppressing the viruses and delaying disease progression. And this became the standard of care in the mid-1990s. And since then, development of new drug classes continued over time. New classes of antiretroviral drugs were developed. Um, and they started to offer more options for combination therapy and reduced side effects, better toler tolerability and convenience. Advances in drug formulation led to improved tolerability and reduced uh, dosing frequency, making treatment uh, regimens much more manageable for patients. And also, uh, the scientists discovered that there should be regular resistance testing because they found that uh, the HIV virus was very, very resilient and it could develop resistance to uh, various drugs very quickly. So the development of resistant testing allowed healthcare providers to tailor treatment regimens to the individual selecting drugs that they were most likely to be effective for each of those patients. And HIV mutation and drug resistance continue to be a top concern uh, right from that point onwards till today. And uh, it's important to note that once a person contracts HIV, the virus begins to multiply in their body and can sometimes change form or mutate. Some of these mutations can lead to drug-resistant HIV. This drug-resistant HIV cannot be controlled by medicines um, that are uh, previously effective on the patient, potentially causing treatment to fail. Drug-resistant HIV can even spread from person to person, a phenomenon known as transmitted resistance. In conclusion, understanding the origins of HIV early diagnosis and the evolution of treatment have been pivotal in managing the HIV slash AIDS pandemic. Ongoing research and efforts continue to improve HIV prevention and treatment strategies, offering hope for a better future. And um, if you were to look at um, drug resistance, one of the main message that I would like to leave you with is that if you're on ART, make sure that you follow the ART uh, schedule to the T. Do not miss a single day of uh, dosage. Do not miss a single element of the combination on any given day. And uh, make sure that you go for regular checkup with your doctor to, uh, to confirm that your ART is still effective and your HIV has not uh, developed resistance to the ART. This is very important. For every HIV patient, patient I think it's the most important thing uh, to my mind based on everything that I've read is protecting your CD4. As long as you have a high CD4 count, uh, you're going to be fine. And in order to keep the CD count high, you have to have a low viral count. And in order to do that, you need to have the uh, ART on a regular basis and also regular checkup to make sure that you're not developing resistance to the ART. And the best way to avoid uh, resistance to ART is to make sure you take the combination exactly as prescribed on a daily basis as prescribed don't avoid any doses at all don't miss any dose that's what i would say so friends this was my attempt to give you an idea of the origins of hiv and how the treatment has developed and uh, all this development has happened over years and every every point of time in this scale there have been patients who have been desperate for better standard of care treatment even for the standard of care treatment because in the early days nobody knew what was happening and they didn't know how to treat it but since then, things have improved a lot. And now we are in the threshold of having genomic medicine that could potentially uh, eradicate HIV from the human system. So I am anxiously looking forward to EBT 101 uh, proving its uh, uh, strength. I'm also looking forward to AGT 103-T uh, doing a good job for us. Uh, so those are the hopes I have. And also, friends, I have a very important announcement. Uh, I've been in uh, touch with uh, AGT 103, and uh, very shortly um, I might be able to have an interview with Jeff Galvin again, and I have a bunch of questions that I've already sent to American Gene Therapies, and I'm waiting to hear back from them. So if it all works out, we'll have one more interview with Jeff, and those questions will not be something that we have had in the past. These will all be new questions. And um, I made sure that to think through everything so that whatever you might think of would already be answered. So with that, my friends, I'd like to bring this video to an end.
Thanks and have a great day. And a special thanks to all our members and Patreons who are helping us keep the lights on on the HIV content. Thank you very much. And uh, I would also request uh, most of the HIV uh, uh, video participants and viewers uh, to consider subscribing to the channel if you have not subscribed already. And most important, press the join button and become a member and help us continue with uh, HIV content for the channel. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.